once the operating system has finished installing, you'll be presented with this screen. So it has installed successfully, so we should be able to click OK now. The Raspberry Pi will go through a quick little reboot, and as you can see, the, all the drivers and information is being loaded up now. Once we've finished the first initial boot, we'll be presented with a new screen. Now in this screen we need to make some changes. You can actually change the user password, but I prefer to leave the default password. Unless you're going to put it in a production environment, I'll probably leave it just as the default user Pi and the password as Raspberry, which is the or Raspberry, which is the original default password. You can also change it so I can boot straight into Scratch if you would like to. But the ones we're going to be looking at first of all is down underneath advanced options so arrow down press enter in here we can actually um, change the host name at the moment it's set to pi so if you're on a network you may want to give it a name so come in here and you can click ok um, so rather than have it called raspberry pi i'm just going to call mine l marsden that way i know this is my raspberry pi and click tab and then I can push the space bar for OK. Once again under advanced options we're also going to make some other little changes here as well. So with SSH we're going to um, enable this so press enter and push space so it's ready to go and just looking under advanced option what else? What? What else? Um, with the audio what we're going to do is change the audio so down to A9 and we're going to change it rather than being auto, we're going to just, you can force it. So it's up to you which way you want to go, but I would like it to come through the um, headphone jack rather than trying to talk to my monitor. Just check that I actually got that one. So force that one, click OK, there we go, tab that, and then click OK. So now we've reconfigured, we've given it a new name, we've set the SSH so we're basically finished at this point of time. We can come back to this menu at other stages and I'll show that in a future video. But at this point of time we can tab down to finish and push spacebar. Would you like to reboot? And then we can enter yes. And the Raspberry Pi will go through its boot sequence once more. Now this is the first time we're booting into the Raspberry Pi with an installed and configured base operating system. Logon once again. I said the username was Pi and the password was Raspberry. And now we're at the batch console, and you can actually see now I've got a command to get in the GUI. We're going to type in start x, and this will take us through to a um, GUI that will enable us to operate the Raspberry Pi. And here
here is the interface. Now if you've got a Wi-Fi link you'll actually see a Wi-Fi symbol up here and you can join that to a Wi-Fi um, network. Underneath menu you've got some programming languages, you can got a basic internet browser, there's some games and there's some accessories you can have a look at as well. We'll be mainly using the file manager and also the bash console as well which is terminal Oops, sorry I double click that so here's our terminal once again now to locate a USB on in the Raspberry Pi that I've got plugged in if you click the arrow down here head down to media you'll actually see here is the Raspberry Pi that I have or the USB that I've got installed in my Raspberry Pi so this will give you file access etc to files. To shut down the Raspberry Pi all we need to do is go to shutdown it will give us some options I want to totally shut down so I'll click on OK it goes through a process of actually turning off things and closing files so you can actually see what it's doing it's actually talking to you in a lot of 